reason for the change was new competition. Other reptiles retreating from the land wars where the dinosaurs were moving into the ocean. They would bring with them new ways of hunting and killing. The battle for the seas was just beginning. For centuries, sailors returned from voyages with fanciful tales of sea monsters. Even Hollywood has tried to cash in on our hunger for the absurd. It's the size of a dinosaur, and ten times more terrifying. Behind these stories lies a grain of truth. Monsters as large and deadly as any legend prowled the seas. For centuries, the quarries of Holzmod in Germany have supplied limestone for pavement and construction. But they have also yielded a more valuable commodity, the fossils of more than 3,000 ichthyosaurs. 160 million years ago, a large inland sea covered much of what is now Europe. This quarry rested at the bottom of a lagoon, similar to the one in British Columbia. When a sea creature died, gases from decomposition lifted its body to the surface. The carcass would wash ashore, disintegrate, or be eaten. But every once in a while, a body sank to the sea floor. There, during a long sedimentation process, it would undergo several stages of fossilization until the bones petrified into the limestone that is now called the Poseidon Slates. Over the years, the Poseidon Slates of southern Germany have surrendered spectacular finds. The Museum Hauf, located in nearby Stuttgart, exhibits some of the best. They include the marine reptile Plesiosaur. Bob Bakker thinks they are one of the most important creatures of the Mesozoic. These, uh, these Plesiosaurs are actually the reason the age of reptiles is called the age of reptiles. It was these giant marine ocean-going reptiles found in the 1790s that gave people a, a hint that the oceans were ruled by these lizard relatives. Nearly all of the plesiosaurs and other giant reptilian monsters of the ocean are found in continental interiors, what are called uh, cratonic seaways. These are shallow bodies of warm water that covered thousands of square miles in the middle of North America, in the middle of South America, in the middle of Australia. We think of continents as dry places. That's true today. In the past, that's not true. The continents were hosts, were holding up these immense areas of shallow, very rich marine habitat. The plesiosaurs began their successful domination of the seas 190 million years ago as reptiles continue their journey into the oceans. Weighing five tons, about as much as an elephant, plesiosaurs had a large body crowned by a small head. Unlike ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs kept their hind legs, which may have proven an advantage in shallow water. Plesiosaurs are what I call double penguins. Go to a zoo or an aquarium, watch penguins swimming around. They're one set of flippers, right? Just one set, one flipper on either side. They're incredibly fast and maneuverable. Plesiosaurs have flippers in the front end and the back end. They're the only animals ever to have evolved which are, can bind the, the uh, shoulder and the hips into this four-flippered configuration. They must have been incredibly fast and maneuverable with huge eyes, very visual predators. This guy is a, is a big-headed plesiosaur. Some of them will get heads four feet, five feet, 10 feet long, able to swallow something the size of a killer whale today. Hole. One of the most successful sea reptiles, over two dozen species of plesiosaurs have been catalogued. The most distinguishing trait is the length of its neck. Those with stocky, porpoise-like necks are known as pliosaurs. This is uh, a short-necked plesiosaur called a pliosaur. Big one, top predator in the system, compact body with a tail, with a bit of a fin for a 
rudder and four sets of flippers like penguin flippers. From the side, its large head looked like a crocodile's. Big eyes made for sharp vision. With its streamlined body and powerful flippers, the Pliosaur was a virtual torpedo, cruising and maneuvering underwater at speeds up to 35 miles an hour. 130 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous period, Pliosaurs grew to incredible size. The largest was the Kronosaur. Its frightening species found in Australia was 50 feet long. Its head was 12 feet. Its jaws were large enough to engulf a cow. While the wide-mouthed pliosaurs grew bigger, the long-necked plesiosaurs grew longer. At 60 feet, the largest was Elasmosaurus. Its 40-foot neck was a cunning new weapon. Like a snake, it could strike out and ambush a hapless fish. Unlike ichthyosaurs, that had lost the ability to leave the oceans, plesiosaurs may have spent part of the time on land. Their bone structure suggests that they were amphibious. Their anatomy was similar to that of modern sea turtles. They had a wide, broad body over a bony, armored stomach region. With their strong hind legs, they may have crawled onto land to lay their eggs. This ability to escape to land for short periods may have been their only defense against another monster, or an even more deadly foe lurked in the sea 130 million years ago. This skull belonged to Mosasaurus Maximus. The Mosasaurus was more than a match for the Plesiosaurus. If there was ever a dragon, this was it. From head to tail, it was 40 feet of sinew and brawn. The culmination of millions of years of adaptation gave the Mosasaurs a dreadnought design. This was not just survival of the fittest, this was survival of the deadliest. Evolutionary pressures created a monster designed for speed and killing. Bill Gallagher of the New Jersey State Museum is duly impressed by this titan of the seas. It was the king of the ocean in the late Cretaceous seas. It was the biggest, nastiest thing in the marine realm. It was undoubtedly uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex of the seas. The skulls of the Mosasaurs were equipped with long pointed teeth with sharp edges. As if this weren't enough, double hinges allowed it to flex its jaws wider, momentarily dislocating them in order to bite off an enormous chunk of flesh or to swallow its prey whole. Its powerful jaw muscles could then slam shut.